What's up everyone? Welcome back to my channel. It's time for another episode of the Never Seen It series. Every single Tuesday, you see me going out there Blu-ray hunting and I'm getting tons of movies. Some of those titles I have never seen before. So I put those off to the side and I created this segment on here that you guys tend to love, which I absolutely am so grateful for. And I let you know my first impressions about these films. Do I love them? Do I hate them? Do I recommend them to you? There's always a best of the batch and a worst of the batch. Everything else falls in between. So let's not waste any more time. The best of the batch is one hour photo. I highly enjoyed this movie. We're seeing Robin Williams in a role that we've never seen him in before. Completely different from anything that he's ever done. It's creepy. It's weird. It's uncomfortable. The majority of the movie, you're kind of wondering why is he doing what he's doing? And then in the end, we do get kind of an explanation, but it's not fully explained, if that makes any sense. It's more alluded to. So we kind of put the pieces together and that in itself is very creepy. So it kind of ends with a question mark and a period, if that makes any sense. But I really enjoyed this movie. Rewatchability factor is high for me with this one because Robin Williams was just so talented in this and he is so missed. We love you, Robin Williams. We respect your work so much and we miss you. We miss you. All right, moving on. Commando. Arnold doing what he does best. Just kicking ass and taking names. It's a very simple plot line. His daughter gets kidnapped. He wants to get her back. That's it. That's all you need. That's all you need. Just take away a daughter. Give him some guns. And that's it. You got a great movie. It's about an hour and a half long. It's a great, quick action movie to watch. And I will watch this again. I'm actually surprised that I had not seen Commando, but I have now. So I am so happy that I picked this up and then I watched it. Moving on to what the hell was this? Willie's Wonderland. Okay. Only Nicolas Cage could take on a movie role where he does not speak one word except for grunting and kills animatronic stuffed animals. This ain't Shakespeare by any means. And I think the people that worked on this movie knew that. They understood that. They knew what they were doing was goddamn ridiculous. But I think they embraced it. And they just did what they needed to do. It's not a bad watch. The only thing I have with this is the rewatchability factor. Am I going to reach for this all the time? Probably not. But I do have it in my collection I'm happy that I have it. When I want to watch something completely outlandish and ridiculous, I'll probably go for this one. It'll probably be my number one choice. Up next is Alone, sent to me by one of my subscribers, Rob. Now, I had heard about this movie. I was not sure about it, but I popped it in one night. And I got to say, I enjoyed this a lot more than I thought I was going to because we do have this woman that is kidnapped and I don't want to reveal too much but she has to survive and one thing that I really enjoyed about this movie is that we have a leading lady not a scream queen because it's not a full-on horror movie but we have a leading lady that uses her brain and she wants to escape from the situation obviously and she knows how desperate the situation is and she needs to get out of it and she doesn't waste any time so this is actually intellectual it's, it's good to have a smart leading lady that knows what she needs to do to escape her captor. And it's all about that. So I enjoyed this movie way more than I thought I was going to. So Rob, thank you so much for this. I recommend that to all of you. Okay, heading into Steelbook Land. We're going to Steelbook Land. The Birds. I've been bulking up on the Alfred Hitchcock collection. I really enjoyed this one. I thought Tippi Hedren, Melanie Griffith's mother, was really great in this movie. However, we don't get an answer as to why the birds are doing what they're doing. Why is this happening? The ending kind of ends, just ends. They just get into a car and they leave. There really is no real conclusion, but I guess that's the way Hitchcock wanted it. So that's how it was done. But I want more. I want more information. I want to know why they're doing this. But I guess back then, you didn't really need an answer. But I, I just want to know things. But this is a great movie. It's a great steel book. If you haven't seen it, pick it up. It's fantastic. 
moving on to Animal House. Okay, so I attempted to finish this movie three separate times. Three times. The first time I fell asleep in the middle, it was late, understandable. The next night I put it in, I fell asleep again, literally at the same point. Okay, so then the third watch, I finally finished it. It took me three times to finish this movie. Not that it's boring, not that it's bad. Maybe I just personally didn't click with it amazingly. I'm not sure. It's a classic film. I wanted to get it. John Belushi is great. He's not like super fantastic. Like I always, when people talk about John Belushi, they're like, oh, he's such a genius and, and this and that. But I've, what I have seen of him, I'm like, okay, I could do that and get, be famous and get paid. I mean, what? Like, I don't see the big deal about John Belushi. Maybe that's just my own ignorance. I don't know what it is. Please do not send me hate comments, but it's not a bad movie. I, I mean, overall, I enjoyed it once I finished it and I'm, I'm planning on watching it from the beginning to the end, because to be honest, the third time I just cut to the middle, <laughs> I cut to the middle and I said, you know what? I can't watch the whole thing. So I'm going to watch it from beginning to end in the afternoon when the sky is bright and I cannot fall asleep to fully enjoy Animal House and one entire run. But I enjoy the steelbook. So that's why I wanted it. It's a great looking steelbook. I don't know. Maybe we just didn't click. I hate that when we don't click. Okay. Moving on to Kick-Ass. I enjoyed Kick-Ass. You know I'm into my superheroes. I'm a Marvel girl. Of course, of course. But I will say the one thing that I was kind of let down by is our leading character who plays Kick-Ass doesn't really kick a lot of ass. The main kicking of ass goes to Chloe Grace Moretz. She was fantastic. Why did the other kid not get to kick ass? His name is kick ass and he's hardly doing it. So I was very let down by that, but I enjoyed the relationship between Chloe Grace Moretz and Nicolas Cage. They play father and daughter. I thought it was a wonderful, quirky, weird kind of relationship. So weird, but I loved it. What's with Nicolas Cage? He, every, anytime you need someone weird, you call Nicolas Cage. He's the one you call. But overall, I enjoyed the movie. Is there a sequel or is there going to be a sequel? Let me know down below in the comments. All right, next up is Last Action Hero, another Arnold. This movie is so meta, way before its time, way before meta was in. This movie, it's not bad. It's not bad, but it was way too long. This movie, I actually looked at my clock on my cell phone. I'm like, is this over yet? Like, that's kind of bad. It just felt like, you thought it was going to end and then it didn't. And then, oh, here it's going to end now. No. Oh, we're not ending yet. Okay. We're still doing this. It was like a, two hours and 15 minutes. It doesn't need to be that long, but the steel book is absolutely fantastic. I mean, look at that. <laughs> That's absolutely incredible. It's worth it for the steel book alone. I did not hate the movie. I just wish it was a little bit better. I don't know. It's just, there was just something that was incomplete about it or just something, something missing. Do you guys feel that way too about Last Action Hero? Let me know in the comments down below. Oh, this one is not a steelbook, but it's Looper. Okay. I was confused. I was confused with this. I was really trying to pay attention because I knew that this was kind of a thinker. This is, uh, oh, this is Ryan Johnson. I thought it was Christopher Nolan. I was going to say Christopher Nolan film. You got to think, but it's Ryan Johnson. Okay, so this is a thinking movie. You really got to pay attention to this. I do have to say, I almost checked out of this until Bruce Willis and Emily Blunt came onto the screen. When it was just Joseph Gordon-Levitt, I was really bored. But once the other two came on, it felt like the movie kind of just fell right into place. Everything was moving really, really... The second half really just picked up. So... I'm a, I'm like a maybe with Looper. I don't know. Like, I don't love it, but I don't hate it. It's kind of meh. Like, all right, I have it. I'm not really sure how many times I'm going to watch it. I'm definitely going to rewatch it because I want to at least understand it. I kind of understand it, but I don't like really understand it. You know what I'm saying? Thank God I got this at FYE for a very discounted price, like $3.99 or something in the discount bin. And we come to... The loser of the week. 
well, the batch, the loser of the batch is Nightmare on Elm Street, reboot, remake, whatever you want to call this. <sighs> Why? Why did we do this? Why was this necessary? Now, I don't know the entire Freddy Krueger franchise. I'm just saying Freddy Krueger franchise. I've only seen the first one. I'm very new to horror, to Freddy Krueger. I've only seen the first, not the entire run. But why did we need this? First of all, we are like full on explaining the backstory of Freddy Krueger and the parents and the attack and what happened. Why is that necessary? Do we really need all of that? I gotta say, the only positive thing about this movie are the kills. The kills are pretty cool. The kills, the way everything happens, okay, that is cool. But what I do not like about this were relying on the jump scares. This movie relied on jump scares so much. I could see it coming a mile away. The way they would suspend and I'd be like, oh, here comes a jump scare. And then it would happen. It was so unimaginative. Really, really, un like, I have no words. This was really bad. <laughs> it's just, it's not even, it's unnecessary. It's just unnecessary. And then the guy playing Freddy Krueger. <sighs> no. Robert England, I think that's his name. He is the only person that should play Freddy Krueger. I know he's getting up there in age. And I know this is an older movie. But we don't need a new person playing Freddy Krueger. There's one person. He is iconic. And that is it. It just did not work for me. The way the actor moved. The way he said his lines. He wasn't scary. He wasn't scary to me. He was laughable. I was like, huh, okay, whenever he would say something, it wasn't intimidating at all. And the way they made him look. And I understand that they wanted to do something different. They wanted to think outside the box. They didn't want to exactly imitate the previous Freddy Krueger and what he looked like. But if it ain't broke, don't fix it if you know what I'm saying. So this is the loser of the bunch. Now, because this is a steel book, I'm not going to toss this across the room. I don't want to damage anything. So we're just going to go like this. There we go. So that is everything new that I have been watching lately in the Never Seen It series. Let me know down below what new things you have been watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you next time.